All right, so here's an example of a uh, triple integral that we're going to evaluate by converting into cylindrical coordinates first. <clears throat> the uh, description of the solid E that we're integrating over is uh, a, a solid enclosed by the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared and the plane z equals 4. So <clears throat> the paraboloid I kind of sketched out here and um, the plane z equals 4 is going to cut the top of this thing off. Um, <clears throat> so here's sort of a picture of the solid that we're looking at. Let me call that E. We're going to project that down into the xy plane, and you can see that the projection would look like a circle. Um, in this case, the circle is going to have a radius of 2, which we can see um, by uh, just looking at this projection. You know, the, the, parabola, the par um, parabola in the yz plane, that's the trace of this paraboloid, would have a point at 2, 4. So that 2 is what's getting, getting projected down here to create the radius of this circle. <clears throat> Let's call that uh, circular region D and find a description for D. Now remember, we're looking for a cylindrical coordinate, so I'm going to go ahead and describe B or describe D as polar, uh, a set of uh, points in polar coordinates. <clears throat> R is between 0 and 2. Theta is between 0 and 2 pi for this one. Okay, now let's go back up and look at the solid region here, uh, or the solid, which I'm calling E, and give a description for E now. Okay, <coughs> so E is the set of all R theta Z, such that my description of uh, D down here gives me the, the bounds on R and theta, so that's uh, R going from 0 to 2 theta going from 0 to 2 pi. Now z, <coughs> what are the bounds on z? So if you remember what I had said uh, in, a, in a previous section, if you're trying to determine what two surfaces defined, uh, define z and which one is the upper and which one is the lower, uh, go to the very top of your solid and imagine dropping a marble or some, some point or something from the top. Um, it's going to hit the uh, paraboloid when once it once it drops that's going to represent the lower surface so the paraboloid which is given by z uh, x squared plus z equals x squared plus y squared that's going to represent the lower bound <coughs> this is le uh, less than or equal to z which is less than or equal to 4 that's the upper bound given by that surface z equals 4 okay <coughs> This tells me how to set up my triple integral. So we're going to have, now remember the order of integration here. Um, we integrate on the outside, 0 to 2 pi, that's my theta. And then 0 to 2, that's r. Z is going to be the inner integral. And we have uh, the bounds on that, x squared plus y squared and 4. <coughs> now the next thing I want to do is make sure that my um, uh, integrand has been converted to cylindrical coordinates as well. But remember, z, the z that shows up in rectangular coordinates, stays as z in cylindrical coordinates. So nothing actually changes as far as the z is concerned. The dv is going to change into a r dz dr d theta. So the whole thing uh, becomes z r dz dr d theta <coughs> okay working this out now so i'm integrating with respect to z first this will become z squared over two but i'm going to take the one half from that and pull it out okay and this is from zero to two so that i have z squared r Uh, from x squared. Oh, and you know what? I just realized one thing I forgot to do. <coughs> I didn't convert all of my limits of integration to uh, to polar yet. What I should have done, actually all the way over here, is converted my x squared plus y squared to an r squared. So I'm going to fix that here. Let's cross that out. That should be r squared 
as should this. It's easy to forget to do that, but we, we caught ourselves. So that means this down here is an R squared. This up here is four. Um, and we have dr, d theta here. <coughs> okay, these are z values, so I'm gonna plug those in, one half, I'm gonna go from zero to two pi, I'm gonna go from zero to two. Um, four squared is 16 minus r squared squared, that's r to the fourth, multiply everything by r, that should look like 16r minus r, to the fifth dr d theta. Now at this point, <coughs> the double integral that remains uh, has limits of integration that are all constants. And so uh, because this isn't like a type one or a type two region or something like that, um, I can actually use that technique that lets me split this up into a product of two, um, two integrals. So I'm gonna take the d theta out and move it over there. This goes from zero to two, 16 minus r to the fifth dr. Okay, we, we've encountered this one so many times, we know that this becomes two pi, but if I multiply it by one half, that just becomes pi. This integral I'm gonna get 16r minus r to the sixth over six, and this runs from zero to two. <clears throat> okay, that's just arithmetic from there. At the end of all this, we should end up with 64 pi over three is our final answer. Okay, <clears throat> so it's one example in the bag, um, evaluating triple integrals with cylindrical uh, coordinates. Let's take a look at one more. Uh, <clears throat> this time it's kind of an application problem. So. We're asked to find the mass of a ball B that's given by this description, x squared plus um, y squared plus z squared is less than or equal to a squared if the density at any point is proportional to its distance from the z axis. So <clears throat> in the next section, we're going to talk about spherical coordinates. And usually an indicator that you want to convert uh, to spherical coordinates is if you see an x squared plus y squared plus z squared present in um, the description of your solid region. We don't know anything about spherical coordinates yet, so I don't get to use that. Um, in fact, cylindrical coordinates are actually good here for a different reason. It actually ha it has to do with the integrand. Um, Notice it says the density at any point is proportional to its distance from the z-axis. That's what r represents in cylindrical coordinates. For any point, it's the distance between that point and the z-axis specifically. So that part is what makes this problem well suited for cylindrical coordinates. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at um, this region first of all. It's a sphere centered at the origin. So we're gonna have x, y, and z. Um, Make our sphere here. And the radius of this sphere would be a, and I'm calling it a sphere, but the sphere is the surface that bounds the ball. Remember the ball has, it contains all the points interior to that sphere as well. Um, we also know that we're gonna need a projection of this thing onto the xy plane, which would very clearly be a circle of radius a, which we'll draw here, xy. radius A there, <coughs> okay? And now we want descriptions of these things, remembering that we're working in cylindrical coordinates. So if I call this D, then D is the set of all R theta, such that R is between zero and A, theta is between zero and two pi. Remember that that's gonna show up in our description of the ball B, here's B, okay? Now, <clears throat> uh, I know that uh, in order to describe the ball B, let's actually get the set up here, R, theta, Z. We know that R is between zero and A. 
theta is between 0 and 2 pi. Where is z? Well, z is bounded by two hemispheres, this top hemisphere and this bottom hemisphere. So uh, if I want to come up with a description for those hemispheres, I need to solve um, this expression for z. I'm going to change that into an equals because the equals is going to give me the surfaces, not the points on the interior. But I'm also going to keep in mind that we're working in cylindrical coordinates, and this x squared plus y squared is really going to become r squared. So I can write this as r squared plus c squared equals a squared, or z equals plus or minus the square root of a squared minus r squared. Those are going to be the bounds on my z. Negative square root of a squared minus r squared is less than or equal to z, which is less than or equal to positive a squared minus r squared under a radical. Okay? <clears throat> so this is where uh, we're going to get um, our uh, limits of integration for our iterated integral from. So now, uh, finally, what I need to do is get a density function. It says the density at any point is proportional to its distance from the z-axis. Well, again, that distance is r. So to say that it's proportional is to say that our density function, p of, or sorry, rho of x, y, z, is equal to k r for some constant k. So setting up this integral now. Um, <coughs> The mass is going to equal the triple integral. We've got a 0 to 2 pi here, a 0 to a here, negative root a squared minus r squared, positive root a squared minus r squared, <coughs> k, r. Uh, and then remember, we multiply by another r because our dv becomes r uh, dz, dr, d theta. So that second r that I multiply in here is going to give me an r squared, dr. Oh, sorry, dz, dr, d theta. That order is important. Okay. <coughs> Integrating this, um, notice all I'm going to end up with is a z. And then when I put in my limits of integration, I'm really just going to see, aside from the kr squared, I'm going to see this radical minus this one, which is the same thing as 2 square root of a squared minus r squared. I'm going to pull the 2 out this way. 2 pi, integral from 0 to a. Uh, now we have kr squared square root of a squared minus r squared dr d theta. Now, it's important to recognize that the a here is a constant. So kind of like the previous example, now that I'm down to this double integral, <coughs> the limits of integration in both integrals are all constants. That means I can separate this out into um, a product of two, two integrals. And I'm predicting what's going to happen here because we see this happen over and over again. When I bring this d theta out, the integral uh, from 0 to 2 pi of d theta is just 2 pi. Multiply that to this 2 out here, and we save a little bit of time by just seeing that this becomes a 4 pi. Okay. Now, the next part is a little bit tricky because this integral here, um, which, uh, let me just go ahead and write that actually, 0 to a, k, in fact, let's even pull the k out. Let's take the k out here. r squared a squared minus r squared under a radical dr. U substitution is not really going to work for this. Um, you can try it and you're going to hit a wall. So this is a classic trig sub. Um, we didn't, we haven't done any of those in this class yet, but that's you spend a lot of time in calculus too, dealing with trig substitutions. Hopefully you remember how that works. Um, anytime you have a radical of the form, uh, or, or, or sorry, uh, a square root in a um, <coughs> integral where the radicand is a squared minus r squared and things like u substitution don't seem to work. What we want to do is set r equal to a sine of theta. So I'm going to go over here. Um, sorry, r, r equals a sine of, and in fact, I'm not going to use theta because I'm already using theta in my cylindrical coordinates. Let's call it phi instead. Um, dr is going to be a cosine of phi 
D phi. Okay. Gonna separate things a little bit. This is getting a little bit messy, but hopefully you can track this okay. Um, <clears throat> we need to make some substitutions here. So I'm gonna get four pi k. Now remember, when you make a trig sub, your units, or your limits of integration are gonna change with it. So um, my lower limit of integration is zero, but that's the value of r that goes here. If I set zero, r equal to zero here and solve for phi, I'm gonna get that phi is also equal to zero. Similarly, if I set r equal to a right here, I would see that sine of phi has to be one. Phi becomes pi over two, okay? r squared is gonna look like a squared sine squared of phi. This radical becomes a squared minus a squared sine squared phi. And then my dr becomes uh, a cosine of phi d phi. All right. This in here, using the Pythagorean identity, becomes a squared cosine squared. Taking a square root gives me a cosine. Times this a cosine, it becomes a squared cosine squared. So I have four pi k integral, that's supposed to be a zero right there, from zero to pi over two, uh, a squared sine squared, um, <coughs> a squared cosine squared, d phi. All right, now we have to um, work with some trigonometric integrals. The a squared to multiply to an a to the fourth, I'm gonna bring that out. I get four pi k a squared integral. Now, uh, let's get the limits in there. Sine squared times cosine squared. I know that sine times cosine is uh, the same thing as one half sine of two phi. That's for my double angle formula for sine. But each one of these is being squared. So that's like squaring this whole thing right here. Um, now, if I were to square this, First of all, that one half would become a one fourth, which I could bring out and cancel with that four right there. Pi k a to the fourth, that should be a to the fourth. Okay, and then if I squared that, I'm gonna have sine squared of two phi d phi there. Um, I need to use a power reduction formula to shrink down the size of this thing. Uh, sine squared is equal to one-half times one minus cosine of uh, twice this angle. The one-half that I would normally get, I'm going to bring that out. Pi k a to the fourth over two. Integral from zero to pi over two of one minus cosine of not two phi, but now it's four phi d phi. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, now... After integrating, I'll get this. So this becomes phi right there. Uh, this becomes minus one fourth sine of four phi. Maybe from zero to pi over two. If I plug in pi over two, uh, four times pi over two is two pi, sine of two pi is zero. So really I just get pi over two minus zero or pi over two. If I plug zero into either of these, they both become zero. So all of this reduces to pi over two, which multiplies to this to give me pi squared, k a to the fourth over four. Okay, um, much more involved. I like this example because it brings back some integration techniques from calculus two which uh, we haven't really been using much in this class, so it's worth reviewing. And uh, that's going to wrap up this entire section.